One of my favorite things about daily driving an Android device is the fact that you can do so very much to customize the look, the feel, the appearance, and the features of these devices. So in this video, we're going to go over my favorite launchers to use in 2023. This is, for reference, a Pixel 7 Pro. So let's start things off alphabetically with AIO Launcher. And what this thing does is actually pretty cool. Basically transforms your home screen into a series of widgets that are actually fairly customizable to give you an all-in-one look at your device and all of its many, many capabilities. You can see there is a clock and weather widget up top. You can see your battery, your storage. You can set timers. You can launch different applications and I believe you can change what applications it shows there. You've got a dialer right there on your home screen, which is pretty interesting. You can add tasks here. You can actually have your own little to-do list built into the launcher itself, which is a pretty novel concept. News, Twitter, your schedule, your upcoming events in your calendar. You can have exchange rates, bitcoins, an audio recorder, system toggles. There is so much that you can do with AIO Launcher. So much flexibility to be had there. And there is actually a little bit of theming that can be done as well. It is a really, really interesting choice for power users. What about the KISS Launcher, which stands for, I believe, Keep It Simple Stupid Launcher, if I had to guess. This is a very, very different one. So you have your uh, pinned apps down here at the bottom, but the primary way you interact with the KISS Launcher is by using this little search button here. It almost reminds me of Just Type back on the Palm Pre in the WebOS day. So you would click there and start doing a search and you're gonna get results for everything. Display settings, your Google Play Books library, the Google Play Store playbook. You're gonna get all your possible results, contacts, anything you could possibly imagine is going to pop up in these search results. And by virtue of that, basically what you're meant to be doing is rather than just clicking on these apps, you have a whole bunch of apps on your screen, you're meant to get used to just using that search. And then you will have your recent apps appearing on the screen. As you can see here, there are actually a handful of settings that you can change what's gonna pop up in your search results, change your web search provider. There's a little bit more you can do as far as the user interface and changing your favorites. But overall, pretty simple launcher, pretty easy to use, but once you get in the flow of using it, you might find yourself actually enjoying it. So moving down the list, we have Launcher 10, which is meant to kind of remind you very much so of the days of Windows Phone. Obviously you can see some animated uh, live tiles is what they were called before. You have live tiles as they were shown before. Not a whole lot in terms of nice animations and things like that, but overall it does a pretty good job of giving you that Windows Phone feel. A lot there you can do in terms of settings. You can put custom icon packs on even this launcher, which I think is pretty cool. You will see some ads in the settings from time to time, like you can see down there now. And of course there is a premium subscription to sort of get rid of that stuff. Overall, it is a pretty solid launcher, but we're actually gonna skip ahead here because I think that there is a better option to go with, which is Square Home. I think this one does an even better job of kind of capturing that Windows Phone aesthetic, but it does so with some really nice smooth animations. I also just like the way that it feels adjusting things around. The actual act of changing the size of your squares, your tiles, is a lot smoother and a lot more intuitive than it is on Launcher 10, but I believe this one also does have a paid aspect to it when you dive into the settings. I think that it actually is either a subscription, yearly $2 or a $5 lifetime purchase, and that does add some functionality to it. Overall, I do think that, in my opinion, from the ones I've tested, this is probably the best one at replicating the look and feel of Windows Phone. So next up, we have the Lynx Launcher, which is very, very different. You can see here on the home screen, we have our search widget up top, which does a good job of finding your applications or giving the option to search on Google or in the Play Store. Really, really like having that there. You may have also noticed that your dock is on the right side instead of where it normally is. At the bottom, you have some widgets that you can place on your screen there sort of next to that. Now, what happens if you swipe to the right is you're gonna get your list of all apps nicely alphabetized. So that is a big difference there. If you swipe up, you get a whole screen dedicated just to widgets. 
And of course, these can be customized, do whatever you want with this page, but that is a pretty novel idea. Now, if you swipe to the left, you get your favorite apps as well as a quick list of your favorite contacts down there at the bottom. Overall, I think Lynx does a good job of just being different, but also using its space, its pages in all directions in a fairly novel and interesting way. This is one I could actually see myself using quite a bit. So the next one on the list is Microsoft Launcher. And a lot of people would probably look at that and say, hold on, I don't want a launcher on my Android device made by Microsoft, right? But I think you should rethink that because Microsoft Launcher is really, really good. And it actually brings a ton to the table in terms of customization, right? You can do a lot with your theme, you know, opacity, blur effects. You can change the way the home screen works in terms of how many columns and rows there are. Your dock can be customized to the point that you can actually expand it. So you have your different icons down here, but you can actually swipe up and have more icons on your dock. So maybe you want a really minimal look on your home screen with very few icons you can stash them all the way there swipe up there to get to them swipe up in the middle of your phone to get to the rest of your apps that is very very cool but like i said there's just so much you can do in terms of customization customize all of your gestures i mean it really does come up very close to something like nova launcher that we're going to talk about later in terms of customization you also have this really cool panel to the left that's going to show you a news feed or your glance feed which is your list of widgets that i do think looks quite nice and is a really nice feature that i just have gotten really used to having and enjoy having over there on the side microsoft launcher is really really good. Let's keep moving though to Niagara Launcher, which is a, a very, very minimal launcher. Pretty much what you see here is what you get. You've got a clock, you've got a calendar, some weather. You can add one widget of your own to the top. I've done a Google search widget. Otherwise, you're going to launch from your favorites or you're going to click on a letter to find the app that you're looking for. You can also search for applications with that little search button. I think you can also access search by swiping up from the bottom that's going to get you there as well at any rate it is a very very minimal launcher it's one that also does work well on devices like the z fold where it's going to look good on both the cover display and the internal tablet display because it actually knows that it's on a z fold for very very good stuff let's keep moving to nova 7 like i mentioned nova launcher is one of the most customizable launchers around Change your grid, your icon layout. Custom icons are, of course, a feature on most, if not all of these. You can change the way your app drawer looks. You can customize the gestures, the look, the feel. There's almost nothing that you can't customize. In fact, you can install an APK to give it a Google feed on that left screen if you want to go that route. Nova Launcher is a tried and true launcher for a reason. You can pretty much make this thing look however you want. Now, there is a Nova Prime that you might have to pay for to get all of the features, but I think it's only just like a few dollars and it's probably worth doing. Nova Launcher, it's been good for forever and it's going to continue to be good. What about ratio? This might be the weirdest one on the list because this is a launcher meant to make you use your phone less. It's actually grayscale for a reason to kind of just make it less harsh on the eyes, less exciting if you will, you have your list of favorite apps here. There is a search at the bottom, which does a good job of not just searching the web, but also searching your apps. And it also hides your other apps. You can customize these categories. It hides your apps behind these categories. And the reasoning is to keep them one additional step away so that you're not just opening your phone. Boom, there's an app clicking on it and doom scrolling. This is a great launcher maybe to use on a weekend phone. If you're one of those people that has maybe a Surface Duo 2 that you're working on during the week, maybe you have something like a Z Flip or something smaller for the weekend, install this on that phone and maybe use your phone less and exist in the world like a normal human. That's the idea of the ratio launcher. And guys, I think that is pretty much all the launchers I was going to talk about. We finally made our way through all of them. Those are my favorite launchers to use for this next year. I'm sure that there's probably some that you use that I did not mention here in this video. Drop those in a comment down below so the other uh, viewers can see those in the comments and check them out as well. And tell us why that launcher should have been in this video. Guys, if you're new here, subscribe so that you don't miss out on more cool videos like this. Maybe it's a cool video. Maybe it's not. Very presumptuous of me. I'll see you guys on the next one. And until next time, Stay nerdy, my friend.